Hey everybody, Andy here with thedustbowlaudio.com and I'd like to welcome you to the one-shot videos. This is a series of short, sharp and to the point video clip tutorials. Um, each one is going to cover one simple topic with the aim of uh, helping you to make better recordings and better mixes. And today I'm going to start off with something that I know has people scratching their heads sometimes. It's the question of how do I get multiple channel outputs from specifically in this case Easy Drummer uh, into my door now. I'm using Cubase 7.5, but most of this is pretty well applicable to any door that you choose to use. So if you're in Pro Tools or Reaper or Studio One or, you know, Sonar, Logic, um, you should have some flavor of most of what I'm talking about. There might be the a little bit that's unique to, to my door or your door, but uh, shouldn't be that much difference. Now, there's a lot of confusion about what happens here and I think there's one very common reason, one little step that uh, a lot of people seem to miss. So what I'm going to do is just to uh, just to sort of show this easy. Sorry you're looking at a blank screen for a while there, but if I do this now, audio tracks were introduced into Cubase or oh, a few releases ago with the aim of making life easier when you're using virtual instruments because it means that instead of having to have a separate instrument loaded into a rack and a separate MIDI track to drive it, you can combine the two together. So if I load Easy Drummer as an instrument there and click on here, which simply opens up the interface, we should find that if I audition this kit, yep, so I can hear the different components of that, no problem. Now. What I've got at the moment is all coming out on one single channel, you see there, which is going straight to my stereo outbus. If I want to get my multiple channels out so that I can, you know, if you, if you record a kit in real life with microphones, you're typically going to have a one or two channels for the kick, a snare top, snare bottom, perhaps a pair of overheads, close mics for the tom, the cymbals and so on. And you can duplicate that by going to the mixer and you see these little numbers down here under each one of the channels. If you click on there and you can assign any individual element of the kit to any particular channel that you want to, or you can let the software do the work for you, select multi-channel and you see you've got a common um, output format set up there. If I then go back to my drums and yep, but the problem I've got now is that all the rest of this has gone quiet. So I've got a kick drum and nothing else and again if I look at my mixer same as you would expect there and the reason that that is happening is that although i've told the virtual instrument that i want to use multiple channels my door doesn't know anything about that at all and what i need to do is go to wh wherever your individual door does it and i need to select the outputs for that instrument channel so in this case i've got all outputs blanked out. You see I've got highlighted the, the stereo main pair. So if I simply do that, so I select all of my channels, unmute that, thank you very much, and then I've got the rest of my kit back. In the project window, it looks exactly the same, and that's a quirk of having um, an instrument channel. It keeps your project window really simple. But if we now look at what we have in the... In the um, mixer you can see i've got all these channels which i can control individually and just to make the point go back to my mixer and select a simple stereo output back to my kit and everything's now coming back on that easy drummer two bus back to my mixer and select multi and I'm spread around the channels again. Right, that's one way of doing it. If I just get rid of that instrument track, because I know that not all doors have an instrument track in them. So if I just remove selected track there, just to keep life a little bit on the simple side. 
and then what I'm going to do is go to devices, VST instruments, and this is the the other and sort of the the old-fashioned way that you would do this, whereby I'm going to load a rack instrument. So I'm now loading the virtual instrument and I need to point some MIDI separately and individually at that to trigger it. Do I want to create a MIDI track? Yes, I do. And let's just move that out of the way for a moment. So you see what I've got here now is I've got a VST Instruments folder with Easy Drummer inside it. I've got a MIDI track here and this is the instrument itself that's actually going to make uh, the noise for me. So if I again point through to my instrument and just to kind of make the point about the MIDI track there. Um, let's just go for something really, really simple. I'll just drag some MIDI out onto it. You don't actually have to do this in Easy Drummer 2. You can build your MIDI down at the bottom here. It's absolutely brilliant, but we'll cover that as a separate issue, I think. So again, just drag a couple of bits of MIDI over there with no particular concern about what it's going to sound like, just so that you can see that we've now got a MIDI track playing the instrument and if we kick that off you can hear your kit as you would think and like we did before you can hear all of that and that's coming out on a just as before a stereo track there right now to get our multi instruments out here exactly the same thing that we're going to do we're going to go to the mixer in Easy Drummer. We're going to select multi channel. That's assigned our outputs for us. And exactly as we had before, that means we lose everything except what's assigned to the first channel, which is typically the kick outer. Now, if I find my instrument rack up here, this is where the slight difference comes in. And this might be more like you would see in a lot of other doors. If I now select my activate outputs from here, so this is from the, the point where Cubase knows about the fact that we've got Easy Drummer loaded, same drop down, same uh, pop out, select all outputs. You see the difference when I've got it as a rack rather than a track instrument is that I now get all of these appearing in my project window. And if I around here see I've now got my multi option kit back pop back over to the mixer just move you up there for a moment and see just as we had before behaves exactly the same way except that you've got the um, the output on your project window and the advantage of having it like this depending on what you want to do is if you say you want to put a compressor just on the kick drum then you can do exactly that. You can come down and uh, choose whatever you might want to put in place, just as you would with any audio recording. Um, so just to recap, I think the thing that probably fools people or that catches people out more than anything is that you go to your instrument window, you go to the mixer, this is a bit people get, and you say, yep, give me my multi-channel outputs. And Easy Drummer now knows it's gone multi-channel. But unless you tell the door that you've gone multi-channel as well, it's not going to know about that. And in Cubase, you can do that from here, from the rack, or in the case of a instrumental track, you can do it from the inspector down at the side here. Okay, there you go. In a nutshell, how to set up multi channels off of um, Easy Drummer 2. This is in Cubase 7.5. These principles lie pretty much true for most virtual instruments and most doors. So I hope that's of some use to you. This is Andy with the dustbellaudio.com, and this is a one shot tip for a better mix. I'll catch you next time out. Bye now.